What's cracking, big dopes? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the HQ. I am Nicholas. This is Big Dogs Gotta Eat BDGE Fantasy Football. Every Saturday, we're hitting you with our favorite player props on monkeyknifefight.com, as well as diving deep into some DFS strategy and plays for the week on DraftKings and FanDuel with our man Joe Holka. This is split up into two sections, player props, then DFS. If you want to jump right to the DFS section, you could do so. That will be linked. The timestamp will be linked in the description. MonkeyKnifeFight.com, probably the best place in the industry to play player prop games that are relevant to fantasy football. They give you all the slates for the NFL games. If you haven't been on MonkeyKnifeFight.com, I would suggest heading over there. You could tail my games. You could fucking fade my picks at this point. Sometimes I'm hitting, sometimes I'm missing. You know, it, it just be like that sometimes. Head over to MonkeyKnifeFight.com. When you sign up, throw $10 or $20 into your account, and you can play as soon as this week. Use promo code B. DGE and they will hit you with a 100% deposit match when you do deposit that moolah ain't nothing more important than the moolah and what we do is we look at the game slates and we see hey what players can we attack what games overall can we attack and then work off there what's interesting about you know week five or week six is probably my favorite time of the season because at the beginning of the year you know, weeks one, two, three, even up to four, we really don't know which teams are, what their identity is, what their defense is. And we get these games where we're like, oh, we get excited about it. I think around week five or week six, we start to get a real feel for who these teams are, right? And we're starting to kind of come into that own because we have a bigger sample size. And each week we get a little bit more data on the team. One of the teams that I think we're really seeing come into their own is, is Carolina by way of their defense, especially their pass defense. So when you're in monkey knife fight, again, use promo code BDGE when you sign up and deposit and you'll get 100% deposit match. So you could do over-unders for a lot of different things, passing yards, receptions, receiving yards, and they have a bunch of really fun games to play. And you can kind of check that out on your own when you go on to Monkey Knife Fight. But one of the ones I'm looking to attack is the over-under for fantasy points. I also want to nail Gardner Minshew with the unders in this game because the pass defense has been fucking lights out thanks to their coverage corners in Dante Jackson and James Bradbury this year, as well as just a great pass rush and coverage, obviously, by Luke Keekley And their rookie, Brian Burns, their early pick this year, has been uh, one of the best rookies in the NFL to date. So he's been a big piece of why this defense has, you know, been improved and been good. And they also signed Gerald McCoy. I think a lot of people forgot about that in the offseason. He hasn't been like a fucking revelation or anything, but him, Dante Poe, like they have a really, really, really solid front seven and good cornerback coverage. PFF has graded them as the fifth best NFL team in terms of coverage. They are ninth best in terms of pass rush. So tough for opposing quarterbacks. We saw them absolutely dominate Deshaun Watson last week. So I'm looking at some over-unders in terms of fantasy points for this game. The first one I want to attack is the running back position. I mean, we have Christian McCaffrey and Leonard Fournette, and these are full PPR fantasy points. We're starting to get a little bit more of a sample size on C-Mac with Kyle Allen at the quarterback position, and a lot of the times he dumps it off. Christian McCaffrey has gone over 23 and a half fantasy points PPR wise in three or four games so far this season. And on the flip side, Leonard Fournette has gone under 12 and a half fantasy points in three of the four games. Actually, that's half PPR, but still, I don't think he's hit 17 and a half outside of this week four game that he had, obviously, that he busted out for like 220 rushing yards against the, the Broncos. If there is one place to attack in terms of their defense, it is the run but I just think their defense overall is very, very solid. So we're going to hit the over on C-Mac, 23 and a half points. We're going to hit the under on Leonard Fournette. I just don't think Leonard Fournette's that good. So I think there's going to be a lot of recency bias, people getting excited about him, but I, th I think he goes under. I don't think he gets in the end zone. We're going over C-Mac. We're going under Leonard Fournette. In terms of fantasy points, this gets a little tricky. I want to take the under on Gardner Minshew. I don't know how excited I am about the over for Kyle Allen. Obviously, he's coming off a really, really poor game, but I think he will fare a lot better against Jacksonville. They're probably going to be without Jalen Ramsey again he wants that trade man he's he's sitting out as long as possible although they do not want to trade him but still their coverage I think they're ranked like 27th per PFF in coverage this year their pass rush has been very middle of the pack average they have a lot of they still have a lot of good like talent on their team but their overall as a cohesive unit nowhere near you know what they were two years ago and obviously last year they had a down year but they haven't really bounced back that great so Jacksonville's no longer really a defense you need to be scared of so we're going to go with the under on Gardner Minshew because this pass defense in Carolina has been very, very, very good. And we're going to hit the over on Kyle Allen fantasy points. I think 15 and a half is not 
asking too much, right? It's a couple touchdowns, probably 200 yards. So I like the over for Kyle Allen. So those are probably the two things I'm going to attack, the running backs, because I think there's a lot of recency bias with Fournette, and then the under on Gardner Minshew because his Carolina pass defense is good. Second game, second slate we're going to be looking at is the highest over on under of Zivik. That is the Kansas City Chiefs versus the Indianapolis Colts. I believe they started off at 57 point total, moved down to around 55, 55 and a half. Patrick Mahomes coming off a zero touchdown game. That means he's due. Anytime Patrick Mahomes does not throw for four touchdowns and 400 yards, the man is fucking due. And we have the Colts. Their defense is completely banged up. I don't know who's actually going to be back on the defense this this week. Pierre Desaire, he returned last week, but played a limited number of snaps. And I believe he left the game again because he has a, a tweak something in his lower body. Darius Leonard missed time. Uh, Malik Hooker, their safety missed time. So they are very banged up on the defensive side of the ball. And we saw it, you know, come to fruition against the Raiders last week. I'm not necessarily going to go with the passing yards because Jacoby Brissett is not a guy that puts up a lot of passing yards. So I'd say 250 is probably fair considering it'll be a lot of garbage time. What I want to do is probably attack the fantasy points for both quarterbacks. These two are tied for the league lead in terms of passing touchdowns. They both have 10. And Jacoby Brissett has put up multiple passing touchdowns in all four games so far this year. Two of them have been three passing touchdown games. So, I mean, Patrick Mahomes over 24 and a half, I think, is a slam dunk against a defense that's kind of banged up. And Jacoby Brissett, I think there's going to be a lot of garbage time. In Kansas City, they're obviously going to have to throw the ball a lot. I think 17 and a half fantasy points is something that he's in almost every game this year. So I feel confident with Brissett right there over 70, 17 and a half. So those would probably be my two picks for, for this slate. You can come play with me, fade me, play against me. You can go look at any of the slates that you want. They have every NFL game on here and tons of different types of games that you could play. It's not just fantasy points or over-unders. There is like the touchdown, I don't know what they call it, touchdown something where like you pick three players and you want to go over one and a half touchdowns combined between the three of them. So it's a lot of fun. They got a lot of, a lot of different games on here that you can go mess around with. Just deposit 10 bucks, throw BDGE in there as a promo code when you sign up and you will be able to double your deposits. That's all we got for Monkey Knife Fight. Let's head into... Uh, also, if you enjoy this section, obviously, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Smash the thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. We'll do this every single Saturday, hopefully, helping you pay the mortgage. Let's jump into our DFS section of the video with uh, my man's Joe Polka. Okay, going to keep this short and sweet for you guys. We went through my data sheet with Nick a couple weeks back, just going through what really matters at each position. We know a quarterback Home favorites are something that is very important. We also want quarterbacks that are throwing deep. So things like average intended air yards, yards per attempt, that sort of thing is something I'm focusing on pretty heavily, but also rushing upside. So I think for DFS in particular, getting that floor, but also the ceiling that comes from a guy that's going to add a little bit on the ground is extremely important. So one thing I think we haven't talked about yet is really targeting defenses that play a lot of zone coverage. I think we mentioned it with with Kyler Murray against the Carolina Panthers a couple weeks ago when he finally broke off that 69 yard rushing game. So it's real. So you have to kind of take an eye uh, or keep an eye on that. I think Lamar Jackson this week still totally fine, even though he is facing this Pittsburgh defense that does play a ton of man. So that's something to think about. Last year, we were talking about this with Josh Allen uh, against the New England Patriots and the Detroit Lions, teams that play a ton of man defense. The, the ceiling just isn't really there for the rushing uh, equity from a from a quarterback at that point so that's something to keep in mind with Lamar I will say that uh Deshaun Watson is going to be probably the highest owned quarterback against Atlanta this week I do think he is in a pretty good spot but there's a couple things that do concern me with him so Deshaun Watson 6700 you are paying a premium for him at that point but the game environment is very strong we expect a lot of plays in this game so if we're just looking at purely at that it could be one of the highest pace games on the entire slate so I love that he is a home favorite. I love that as well. Deshaun Watson, not scared to throw the ball downfield. I love all of those things. I, I will say that the, the man defense for Atlanta is a little bit concerning, but I mean, Atlanta's really just been taken advantage of uh, a lot this year. So I think they're probably fine. One thing that I, I am a little bit nervous about, so Atlanta's defense, I, I will say that they faced some pretty elite offensive lines this year. They played Pittsburgh. They played Philadelphia. They they play Tennessee. Tennessee's got an underrated offensive line as well. So they haven't really gotten to the quarterback as far as sacks yet. But I will say they're top six in pressures this year, according to Sports Info Solutions. So it's there's a chance that maybe they do get home against uh, this Houston offensive line that we know we're trying to target. So I do think Deshaun Watson is a really strong play. But I will say that there's a little bit more risk than I think a lot of people are kind of leading on uh, in the industry right now. So I think there's a couple other guys that we could be considering. I mentioned uh, Lamar Jackson and his rushing floor. 
Um, I think Kyler Murray in this in this Cincinnati and Arizona game is pretty interesting as well. Like we're talking about game flow, we're talking about pace, that sort of thing. Like we're almost always going to be kind of drawn towards these these Cardinals games all season. The one thing that I don't really love about Kyler Murray is he's not really throwing the ball downfield, but it is a team. Cincinnati's a team that does play a decent amount of zone coverage. So we could see a little bit more on the ground from Kyler. I, I do like that quite a bit. We'll talk about David Johnson in a bit, but I think Kyler could be a nice contrarian play this week. I, I think that there will be some people that kind of want to go back to, to Jameis Winston against New Orleans. I, I guess have some serious pace concerns from that perspective. So um, one guy that I am actually considering from a cash game perspective that I don't think is terrible is Chase Daniels. So 4,800, we talked about this uh, a couple of weeks back, I think when we were uh, paying all the way down for Kyle Allen at 4K, 4,800 just allows you to do a lot with your roster. So I don't think that um, he's an elite option by any means, but uh, we are going to need some salary this week, I think, to try and get up to some of these running backs that we'll talk about. I think Dak's in a pretty good spot. Green Bay has just been limiting plays on the other side a lot uh pretty much the entire season so it might be a zeke game which we'll talk about soon but i don't love the quarterback options as much as most people this week i think going back to lamar is totally fine but tough matchup against Pittsburgh. deshaun watson he could easily shred this atlanta defense like a lot of people have this year i'm i'm just worried a little bit that the teams that have been shredding atlanta have a really strong offensive line which houston does not so um it's an interesting week at quarterback definitely circle back I'm going to look at this a lot more. Circle back to my stream on Sunday mornings, 1130 Eastern time. I go live twitch.tv slash Joe Holka. Hopefully at that point, I'll have a favorite quarterback. But I really think that Deshaun Watson, you could make an argument probably for the other side of that game with Matt Ryan as well. But as of now, I, I think I'm leaning towards just taking uh, the Lamar Jackson floor. But I'll see you guys definitely on Sunday. We'll talk a little more about that. Let's move over to running back now. So as you guys know, I, I pay up for running back. Like Christian McCaffrey is someone that I play each and every week in pretty much all of my um, all of my contests basically so 37 touches last week i did play leonard fournette last week as well uh, i do have them for the two most uh, projected touches this week so you can certainly make an argument at that point zeke cook camara like those guys they're still going to see great volume so i think the big decision point this week is um if you do play mccaffrey what do you do after that with guys like ezekiel elliott guys like dalvin cook and dies like uh, Alvin Kamara. So Alvin Kamara, this Tampa Bay defense has played really well against the run this year. But I mean, I still think that most of his equity comes through the the air anyway. So I, I don't love the plays in that game. So that's kind of a, a knock on Kamara, especially at 8,600. Someone like Michael Thomas is a lot cheaper uh, since the Drew Brees injury, but Kamara's price hasn't really moved a whole lot. So um, keep that in mind. Ezekiel Elliott, I, I'm a little bit kind of annoyed that people just want to jump off of Ezekiel Elliott just because he hasn't been as involved in the passing game last week you saw seven targets so I mean maybe they're they're scaling him back in slowly they're trying to protect this asset that they just gave all this money to so yeah 18 touches on the ground last week fine but seven targets again I mean I, I think Zeke is in an amazing spot this week I think that he's someone that we could go to especially against this Giants team that I think finally uh sorry especially against this Green Bay team that has struggled to defend the run a bit so um, Zeke squarely in play for me for net 6,400. I guess think he's still underpriced this Carolina defense. I do think is, is underrated. So, um, I think from just a pure touch perspective for net certainly makes some sense. He's someone that has been active in the passing game. Wasn't actually that active in it last week. He did have 29 carries only three targets, but the weeks before that eight targets, six targets, six targets week before that too. So we talked about that with Nick last week. I definitely think you can go back to four net again. So past that. Dalvin Cook, I do think that he's the guy against the Giants that makes a ton of sense. And when I'm talking about uh, this Giants team, I, I think they've probably ran pretty good um, since the Eli Manning quarterback change. But this could be the week where they kind of come back down to earth. And we know that Minnesota wants to lean on the run, despite all of this news with Thielen and Diggs and the media. Like, who knows if they're actually going to try and get those guys more involved. So I certainly think that Dalvin Cook is right there at 8,400. Um Christian McCaffrey, I, I mentioned him before. I will say that the Jacksonville has done a really good job at defending running backs this year. They did hold uh, a, kind of a lot of guys back earlier in the season. So I think that that's one that we need to be thinking about. Offensive plays do look pretty good in the Cincinnati game. Joe Mixon, someone I probably need to see it from first, but targeting Arizona, still think that he is he's totally fine. If we want to kind of go down the salary spectrum a little bit, um, I do think David Montgomery at 5,200 makes some sense. So he's one of those guys that's probably just underpriced relative to that volume. 
I don't love this game in Oakland, but 20 touches for 5,200, certainly have to consider him. Um, we'll have to keep an eye on someone like Jalen Samuels if uh, if Connor doesn't play, um, but we're kind of keeping an eye on that. He's questionable at the time of this recording. So those are the guys that I'm kind of looking at at the lower end of the salary spectrum this week at running back. But let's move over to wide receiver. So wide receiver really focused on weighted opportunity rating. This is basically an air yards and target share metric that I really value for DFS in particular. So Keenan Allen, Michael Thomas at the top. I think Michael Thomas at 6,600 is really interesting in DFS this week. I think the price has probably gone a little bit too far on him just with the, the Bridgewater offense. Like he was never a guy that was seeing deep targets anyway. He just had this really high catch rate. So I think that even though Bridgewater isn't going to push the ball downfield. I, I think the volume is still so totally safe for, for Michael Thomas. So um, I'm interested in them a, as a home favorite. Um, I, so I think moving down a little bit, DeAndre Hopkins, I mentioned if you're a believer in Deshaun Watson this week, it would make sense to get back on DeAndre Hopkins, someone that didn't really perform super well as far, as far as a fantasy perspective last week, but he is still getting those targets. So I think that he's still a guy that you'll want to go back to. Um, I think wide receiver is a really interesting one kind of at the lower end this week. So someone like Auden Tate, he's at 3,500. Keyshawn Johnson, another guy that's at 3,500, that kind of is going to see an elevated role because of some injuries, but also this just Arizona and Cincinnati games is going to see so many plays that I think both of those guys are decent, cheap options. Again, if you're a believer in Deshaun Watson against this Atlanta defense, Will Fuller, I think, will carry a lot more ownership this week than he has. But he's a pretty solid play at 4,500 based on his weighted opportunity rating. I think that he's totally fine um he's someone that again let's just hope that atlanta doesn't get to the houston offensive line too bad um but from a projection standpoint i think that he's still a really good play um that's kind of where i'm at on the kind of the cheaper side of things i think some other guys that that will definitely draw some ownership i think people will go back to the mike evans well this week at, he's 7100 i think that he's someone that has kind of a larger range of outcomes than someone like chris godwin just godwin's being used in a spot that i think that you can definitely attack this new orleans defense but i'll say I, mean, I still think that you can attack new orleans deep as well i'm not really scared of marshawn Lattimore. so evans at 7100 i think will still be someone we can go back to it, it's a really kind of interesting spot um a couple other guys at the lower end of the spectrum that i didn't mention curtis samuel at 4500 against this jacksonville team i'm not scared of of ramsey even if he doesn't end up playing in this game i think that samuel is still one of those guys that is super safe and his price hasn't really moved a whole lot so he's someone that's almost always popping in these air yards metrics so i really like him um especially at that price um javon wims so if we get taylor gabriel ruled out officially uh, wims is a guy that's done really well for us in the preseason in the past definitely could be someone as far as a cheap stack that you could throw with with daniel so uh, i'm interested in him at the very cheap end of things um but that's pretty much it um, at the wide receiver position you can always make a, an argument for someone like julio especially if you're rolling out some matt ryan julio stacks in tournaments um keenan allen 7300 keenan allen's a great play seemingly every week we still don't know what's going to happen with the split between melvin gordon and austin eckler but i think both of those guys are totally fine um alshon jeffrey will be back this week i think he's someone that you could get at really low ownership with wentz i think a good amount of people will be going wentz Ertz this week so interesting leverage play for for Alshon, I think. Um, all right, so let's move over to tight end now. I don't want to have this video be too long for you guys. Uh, we'll probably get back to our normal schedule next week. But so I, I do think that let, let's get the the Tyler Eifert thing out of the way right away. So tight ends against Arizona. People have been talking about it all week. Um, I will say I'm a little bit nervous by the actual routes that he's been running, his yards per route run very low um so i'm not sure the upside is great here but if you're playing cash games tyler eifert at 3300 does allow a lot of kind of flexibility with the rest of your team he is a home favorite again ton of pass attempts in this game team total is something that we really value at tight end so this is a decent team total as well so i think he's totally fine um i, I think that he's very similar to the will disley play last week um, the difference is that i think cincinnati is still going to throw if they do get ahead on arizona at the top end, um, Zach Ertz is the guy that I'm kind of zoned in on right now, that massive total against the, the Jets, and we're projecting them for a ton of plays. So at 6K, he's expensive, but I think if we're just looking at routes run, he's clearly one of the elite options on this slate for sure. Um, Darren Waller, someone that I think has probably a little bit more upside, but it is a tough matchup against Chicago. It hasn't mattered much for Waller this year. He's someone that kind of battled through that against Minnesota for a massive game. 
you can project him for just so much volume at this point. I do think he's a really good athlete. Um, Darren Waller, no issues with him at 5K as well. As far as a couple other guys that that might draw some ownership this week, um, I do think that Jimmy Graham at 4,300 is at least somewhat interesting with this kind of depleted uh, wide receiver core without Devontae Adams. It's possible that we could see Jimmy Graham get in the end zone. Austin Hooper against Houston, but 4,500 on DraftKings. He's actually the most expensive tight end on FanDuel, which is just crazy to me. But I mean, it's really hard to kind of argue with his catch rate and with his uh, routes run this year. So he's probably okay, especially in the game. We think there's going to be some passing involved. I, I think that he's probably fine. Still think I prefer getting to Ertz, Ingram, and that tier. Um, so it's a slate where we don't have George Kittle. We don't have Travis Kelsey. So it is a little bit different. Um, as far as the options that we have available, but Waller, Ertz, we still have some firepower here at tight end this week. So um, let's move over and, and talk about defense quickly. I'm just going to go back to the full screen here. So at defense, what we want is pass attempts and we want pressure, right? So I think that honestly, if you really wanted to pay down for defense this week and go with the Cincinnati or the Arizona uh, defenses, I think those are totally fine. I, I think if there is a defense that that really stood out to me at the cheap end. I think we can go back to Carolina at 2,600, a team that's pressuring a ton. Um, sure, Minshew has been been pretty decent uh, at Jacksonville. is still uh, an issue where I think that we can still go there. So 2,600, again, they're a favorite. Pittsburgh against Baltimore, I mentioned how I at least have a little bit of concerns that Lamar is going to see a ton of man coverage. Um, just the scheme for Pittsburgh shapes up well. Um, Lamar will make mistakes and, and take sacks. So 2,100, if you want to pay all the way down, I could see Pittsburgh gaining a little bit of traction. And... And it's hard to just go through this and not talk about the New England Patriots. 4,300, they're really expensive. But, I mean, one of the best, if not the best, defense that we've seen from the Patriots in, in quite some time. Um, so I think that they're they're totally fine against this Washington team that's just not good. So um, I'm interested in going back to that well. Um, outside of that, I, I really don't think that uh, defense is a great position this week. Um, you could probably go back to, uh, I don't even know. I was going to say the Chargers, but it is... Um, I mean, they're 2,700 at that point. I think I prefer these other ones that we're, that we're talking about, um, or just kind of trying to go contrarian. If you did want to go super contrarian, I think that since Deshaun Watson is going to be so heavily owned this week, going with the Atlanta defense at 2,500 in tournaments, like if you think that maybe they've been playing against some of these really tough offensive lines and their pass rush is at least decent. I mean, targeting Houston has been great. I mean, you know, he's going to take sacks. So, um, I think that they're, for sure interesting but yeah i'll kick it back to nick um we'll get back to our our normal streams on fridays uh to kind of walk you guys through the dfs slate we'll take some more q a next week as well but uh, nick appreciate you letting me be a part of the dfs video again on your channel and if you guys haven't checked out my channel youtube.com slash joe holka a bunch of dfs content i do the fantasy footballers dfs podcast that releases on fridays every week and then i have a couple of stacks videos value plays videos like Tons of content over there, uh, Instagram as well. Really trying to work on building that up. Uh, I do uh, a post every Saturday for my top five picks at each and every position. So to be sure and check that out, Instagram.com slash Jill Holka. Pretty simple. See you guys next week.